Oh. No! Is he still on there? No! Dang it! He went through the net. Yeah, he's in a, that's not a brookie. There's no way, man. We're into some interesting fish here. That's super cool. My interest in this trout began when I heard rumors of a Paiute cutthroat-like trout occupying the headwaters of a small isolated stream in Nevada. With the Paiute cutthroat's appearance being that of the stream form Lahatan that simply forgot its spots and taking into account its approximate location, I figured this population must be that of the latter. But that was before I stumbled across the name Humboldt cutthroat trout. The unnamed, undescribed Humboldt cutthroat is endemic to the Humboldt drainage. Once a part of the ancient Lake Lahatan, this bastard of the cutthroat family has a sort of evolved resilience, allowing it to survive the extreme flood drought cycles the Humboldt drainage is known for. With the reported spotting frequency lying somewhere in between the Paiutes and the Lahatans, I figured it was time I visited this small isolated stream to take a closer look at the rumored David-like trout. Man, I got down there. Great big beautiful pool. And I figured, man, that's there's gotta be a monster lurking in there. Snuck over there, dropped my fly in. Nothing. So then I got up and kind of peeked over the edge to, you know, where I knew I would spook the fish, and there wasn't a single fish in there. Kind of weird. Sometimes the spots that you know the, the best spots little pools and stuff on the creek there's nothing in and don't understand it all right Still on there? No, dang it. He went through the net, fit through the net, and then he got off. I had him in the net. I was just trying to get a picture of him. Darn it. I missed it, man. That was a big fish. That was way too big for the small little creek. Dang it. Did he get my fly? No, it just slipped out as soon as I tried to scoop my net down in there. All right, I'm gonna come up here and get organized a little better. That fish was probably eight, 10 inches. It was a really big fish for that. Um, I think I'm gonna size up a little bit. I got a, I don't know if you can see that, I got a small smoke jumper on there. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna size up my, my fly a little bit and try to get a better bite on him because gosh, I can't believe I missed him. Darn it, Humboldt cutthroat trout. Got him! Yes! <laughs> yeah! Look at that fish! Oh my gosh! 
There is a Humboldt cutthroat trout. Wow. Is this thing on? We're gonna get our release shot here. So small here. Put your hand a little bit. Put the. You want a picture here? Uh, See, I usually keep the net underneath when I'm trying to pull the fly out. Let's get a picture real quick. That feels nice. See, I told you I was a mountain man. All right, guys, I think that's a wrap for the episode today. Hope you enjoyed that. Came in, caught a Humboldt trout on the very edge of the Humboldt Basin. So, yeah, this has been kind of a, a mystery to me personally for a while because I'd, I'd heard about them so such a long time ago. I feel like every time that I set out to catch one of these fish, it usually takes two or three attempts to actually catch one or land one. <laughs> I don't know what it is, uh, nerves or something. I get up there and it's like you travel such a great distance to, to get to an area and, you know, spend a whole bunch of resources chasing after one little subspecies of fish and yeah obviously it's not as easy as just walking up to the little creek even though the relatively easy fish to to catch hey it, it can't be so easy just to walk up there and snag one for some reason i it always takes me a couple of attempts but anyways yeah we're gonna call that a wrap to, uh, for this episode and we'll see you next time peace <laughs>